David Lawrence Hadler. Okay. I'm one of the third generation of the Hadlers. Okay. My dad was the baby of the family. So you grew up on the and family. my mother was the baby of her family. Okay. And five brothers married five sisters. Yeah. When were you born? Uh, December 23rd, 1932. Yeah, no, you were a Christmas baby. Yeah, it was good. I got all them presents. Yeah, that was great. My godparents, I upset the whole chain in my family when I was a kid. They were envious of me. And that was Louis, ha uh, yeah, Louis and me and Hadler were my godparents. And they were wonderful. And all my aunts and uncles were wonderful. And I knew them, stayed at their place when I was a young sailor. I'd drop in, we'd have dinner, everything. That was marvelous. There were four of us in our family. And uh, we moved around quite a bit because dad was an independent. He didn't want to work for a company very much. Although he did work for Caterpillar and Chehalis and John Deere during the war. But uh, after that, he, he wanted to be independent, so he was a mechanic, a diesel mechanic, uh, and a welder and all that stuff, so he had his own shop okay. the remainder of uh, his life. So when you were younger, did you work in that shop with him? I, I had to do, he had me, uh, was slave labor, uh, doing the heads on, cleaning the heads on the car, you know, the cylinder heads on and stuff. And during that time we did batteries, redid batteries, because during the war you couldn't get a battery hardly, so I had to take the stuff off of it. And then he put the acid and the stuff in and sealed them back up. And, uh, you know, um, generated their juice and and sold them and or gave them away or put them in his vehicles, whatever the hell he was doing. How old were you then when all this was going on? Uh, probably 10, 11. 10, 11, and you worked in the, in the shop with him at 10 years After old. school. After school. I was never a good student. You can understand because the folks wouldn't let me have homework. Okay. You had to do jobs. First came the jobs. Then, the you know, so, uh, I had problems in school, but I had some magnificent teachers that I finally, I think I was uh, seventh grade, I had this magnificent teacher that took me for an hour every day when the other kids were having study hall, and so I got my first B. I was CD. That was my name, hell. <laughs> Yeah, I went uh, 17, I went into the Navy. I wanted, uh, the folks never had any uh, retirement or anything, uh, no hospital, you know, coverage or anything. And I wanted those two things, retirement and medical. So I did a total of 40 years in the Navy. Well, I did 22 active and then and then uh, another 20 with civil service. They wanted me because I was what they call an expert in food service. And during that period of time, I was, uh, I had to have my budget uh, approved at the Senate. So I had to go to the Senate once a year uh, for Antarctic. I uh, was in charge of all the food for that. Operation Deep Freeze, which is Antarctic. Uh, we went down during the summer, which uh, meant uh, September to February. And then I came back to Rhode Island, the naval base there, and ordered all the provisions. Uh, two ships of provisions. They gave me a little over $2 million for food at that time. And that was in the 60s. So for how many people were stationed there? Uh, about 2,800 during the summer, during the winter, maybe 100. Which they called winter overs, you know, because it was black. When that sun goes down, you got 24 hours of sun from September to February. After that, it's pitch dark. They had quite a few uh, scientists come down there. 
and they were checking like for fleas and you know trails and all this kind of stuff and uh, all the different graduation of the snow how it melted and the temperatures and all this stuff. It was a science mission. Yeah, yeah. Basically, that's what it was. Yeah. And uh, I was in Korea and Vietnam and uh, Cambodia during doing a little fighting. And uh, my the ship I was on ran aground in Bong Tao, and we were there about three days until we could get it off, and we lost a some divers there because the snakes got them, you know? Snakes. Yeah, poisonous snakes there. There are a lot of poisonous snakes uh, on that, uh, in uh, Vietnam, Cambodia area, you know, in that area, yeah. So, uh, but uh, overall, it's very, I've had a, and I was a food specialist, see? That's, that's the thing. I wanted to be the best I could, and, uh, I'm still doing cakes, Are you? wedding cakes, ice carvings, all that kind of stuff. That's what I do. You have a business now? No, you no. Do that or you just do it. I do it just to make people happy. I love everybody. That's it. You know, even my doctors. I send them a cake twice a year. Thank you for getting me out of the dirt. You know, huh? And it makes them smile. Yeah, decorate them. You know, make it look nice. You know. Quarter sheet cakes usually. Oh uh, yeah, my life is uh, fantastic. They want to keep you around. Keep getting more cakes. Well, I don't know that, but uh, you know they've been very good to me. I've had about nine major operations in my life, so I've had just about everything. You know, I had heart surgery. I, I'm celebrating 30 years after triple bypass surgery. Good for you. Yeah, and uh, you know. Uh, they work on me and send me home, and I go back to work, fooling around, you know, mowing lawns and for the widows and stuff, and you know, just I have a nursery. I'm still working my nursery and selling a few plants. You know, I'm a cheap two bucks. You know, I'm a two buck. You know, one gallon. Yeah, one gallon is two bucks. Whether it's you know, uh, bowling the uh, teas or whatever. You know. Yeah, and small tree, palm trees. So where do you live now, now that you're out I of live uh, 12 miles out of Hilo, Hawaii. Yeah, and the reason I'm there is because my wife, when I was a young sailor, got off the airplane in Pearl Harbor and said, this is our home. And what you gonna do now, huh? You're moving yeah, yeah, you're staying there, yeah. Well, I went, you know, fought a few wars and stuff, and this and that, uh, but she got to be, have her dream. And I think that was very important. And I think that extended her life because she had a few medical problems. And I lost her 14 years ago, but uh, I wanted to make sure. Yeah. And so it, you've stayed there since then, since she passed away? Yeah, pretty much, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was in Kwajalein for five and a half years. Our missile, Navy missile, military missile place from Vandenberg, uh, California to there. We tested uh, all the missiles out in, uh, I went there in 79 as a civilian. Well, I have three, three children. Uh, my wife and myself adopted one Hawaiian baby and two Indians. One, the Hawaiian baby was in, in Hawaii and the other two were from the state of Maine when I was stationed at a commissary store in northeastern Maine at a naval base there. And uh, yeah, it's been good. I have one older son uh, born to us and uh, he's a senior citizen now, hell. <laughs> grandkids? Uh, we got uh, quite a few grandkids. I think there's eight. And I think there's one, two, three great grandkids. 
Um, and, you know, uh, my life is fantastic because they're all so nice to me. They call me up or they send me pictures on my cellar telephone. I send them pictures. You know, it's a, a, I have a real nice life. Yeah. Yeah. I got no complaints. That's good to hear. Yeah. Anything else? Dave, what do you plan on doing the rest of your life? Playing an accordion. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it, uh, I'd like to live another 20 years if I can do uh, something good for somebody, you know. And that's, that's my whole thing. Every day I want to do something for somebody good. And I feel better, you know. How many yards do you mow a week? Right now I'm only doing... Uh, eight a month now. I used to do 20, but hospitalization, back and forth, I'm down to eight. Do you have any family in Hawaii there with you? No. Nope. Well, everybody's my family. I mean, hell. What can I say? Everybody's gorgeous. Kids are gorgeous, grandkids are gorgeous, great-grandkids are gorgeous, everybody's gorgeous. And friends are gorgeous. All my relatives are gorgeous. What's the, uh, what's the key to living a good life? Is there any key? Love everybody. You don't have a stomach ache or a headache. <laughs> yeah. And you gotta, it takes something to do that. You know, to block out those little irritations that you might have. Like a policeman giving you a ticket, huh? <laughs> you know, huh? <laughs> or somebody running into your truck. And God hasn't called my number yet. That's a, that could be the big thing. lost your phone number. And I go to church all the time, you know. I sing to the choir, you know, and this and that. You got to be honest about life. Hell, yeah, hell. Got to have fun. Got to laugh a lot. <laughs>